we've been listening our whole lives. And it's not something we've ever been taught, except for maybe that active listening training that was mandatory that we had to take at work years ago. As parents, we tell our kids to use your listening ears, but really that's just code for pay attention the first time. Listening is also almost non-existent in politics and much of mainstream media. And we've become impoverished by this lack of respectful dialogue. And what about in our own lives? How are we coming into conversation with each other? And are, are our attempts to reach out across differences in our personal lives fruitful? For me, it's a mixed bag. I have a three minute storyteller where I've, I've had the great fortune of being in conversations with leaders and movement makers of all stripes. The conversations have been nourishing and fruitful and enriching, even if they've been challenging. I'm always left nourished. But in my personal life, with my family and friends, the conversation often disintegrates into a heap of frustration. So what's the disconnect? Are there conditions that are supportive to good listening? And if so, what are they? And how can I apply them more universally in my life? Generous listening, I realize, is how we show up to a conversation. It's an intention we set before any communication begins. And it requires practice, which is definitely not something normally associated with listening. I know I, for one, don't thoughtfully think about how to engage with my Uncle Bert at holiday dinners, even though I know he's going to corner me and give me an earful. More often than not, fraught conversation catches us by surprise. It's when we're at the sidelines of our kids' soccer game or we're at a neighborhood barbecue. But instead of dreading these inflection points, what if we saw them as opportunities to weave our frayed social fabric back together? I know that we all have the innate capacity to bring our lives into conversation. In fact, the call for skillful listening has never been more urgent. Because despite all we've been told, change doesn't happen in the center of power. It happens at the margins and it builds towards a critical mass. We are the change we've been waiting for. And this National Week of Conversation is the perfect opportunity to become what we practice. So let's share our stories with each other. I know I found some supportive conditions that really nourish good conversations. And one of them is when your curiosity matches your convictions. We hold our convictions so dear. They're such essential parts of us. And sometimes it feels dangerous to enter into a conversation where we know the other person has different beliefs than us. It almost feels like we're going to compromise our beliefs just by beginning the conversation. But listening first doesn't ask us to check our convictions at the door. In fact, good listening happens when we hold the curiosity for the other person with the same level of tenderness as we hold our convictions. The second supportive conditioning for, condition for nourishing conversations is when we release the need to find common ground. I know this sounds crazy because we've always th told that we need to debate our point and debate and figure out where we differ and how we can come into common ground. And even since elementary school, we've been rewarded for poking holes in the other side's argument. But listening first gives us permission to leave the hard questions unanswered. And I found it's really liberating when we're freed from that relentless beat to convince the other person. And it feels like space opens up for conversations to become a source of renewal, when we can let go of the need to convince or change or even build consensus. So when we listen with the ears of our heart, and we let go of all outcomes and expectations, except for the willingness to be surprised, we find that conversations be can become an oasis. And maybe even with Uncle Bert. I I'm not sure about that yet, but I'll let you know after dinner. <laughs>